Kentucky. I went to high school in Kentucky, you know, Olita Baptist Institute, and I went to Western Kentucky University, you know, and um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, you know, get this money, get this money, get this good money. Get this good money. tonight, oh Heavenly Father. Lord God, we just thank you, God, for who you are, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Lily in the Valley, the bright and morning star, God. God, you are God. Hallelujah. There is none before you, none after you. You are the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, our author and the finisher of our faith. You are, you are God. Hallelujah. There's no name above your name, Jesus. Not sickness, not drugs, nothing is above your name. Your name is the highest, nothing above you. You are all-knowing, all-seeing, ah, omnipresence everywhere. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you and thank you, God, for who you are. We ask you, God, that you would forgive us for our sins, those things that we said, done, thought about, that wasn't pleasing to your sight, God. Forgive us tonight, Lord. We know we haven't gotten it all right, God. We know we've done some things on this week, Father, that was not pleasing to you, but we ask your forgiveness. We repent right now. Somebody say, I repent. I repent. I repent for the things I've done wrong, Lord. I repent, I repent, I repent. I repent, I repent, I repent, Father. And God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your I thank you for your forgiveness. Turn it off. Turn it off. For me, please. Thank you. I thank you for your forgiveness, O Heavenly Father. Father, I thank you. Your forgiveness is great. Your mercy and grace is renewed every morning. I thank you for forgiving your people, God. In Jesus' name, don't let us do or say anything here tonight that goes against your will. Father, everything that's said and done here on tonight, Father, you do it and say it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Get your pad and pencil by. We're going to learn on tonight. Is that okay? We're going to have some teaching. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to teach. Amen. Sometimes God don't want you whooping and hollering. He wants the people to get to understand what he's saying. So sometimes we got to go to teaching. Amen. And this is a lesson that's not an easy lesson. I'm going to tell you now. You might not like me after this lesson. I know y'all love me. Y'all don't love me. Amen. But I'm going to tell you why this lesson is a hard lesson. Because tonight I'm going to speak on the enemy, okay? I'm going to speak on spirits. Amen. And sometimes I hate to speak on things of the devil and spirits because I'll be saying, babe, well, God, what if there's some babes in the house that don't really understand this type of thing? This buzz is still going on. Can we cut this off? Yeah, I get it. Oh, okay. I got the oh. Um, amen. When we are talking about babes in Christ, those that have just came to the Lord, amen. Sometimes I get a little concerned about speaking on things that they might not understand. And I don't like to speak on stuff that go over top of people's heads because then that don't help them. If you don't understand what I'm saying, then it really don't help you. That's like me speaking Chinese and you speak English, amen? amen. So I want everybody to understand what I'm saying. But you know what God told me when I was thinking like that, he said, you got to tell them about the enemy and how the enemy tactics go and how, if I know and I had to learn, amen, then I learned for a reason. I learned so that I can tell somebody else. That's why we go through, you know. We go through so that we can help somebody else that's going through. So God said, teach. And I said, okay, God. We're talking about a man, first of all. We're going to break it down and go all the way down to our point. But we're going to start at the top. How many of y'all know generational curses is real? 
Yes. This ain't an easy message. Y'all pray for me. The prayer warriors pray. What's, what's generational curses? Generational curses passed down from generation to generation. I'm gonna let you ask questions after, okay? All right, you got it. I love questions, so I don't mind questions. And write it down, all your questions. And I'll answer every last one of them afterwards, okay? I love questions, I love that. I love to teach, and I love people that wanna learn, amen? And that's willing to ask questions, so that's all right with me. But generational curses is the curses that are passed down through the generations. Like your father's father's forefather's father was into some mess. They probably were smoking weed. Amen. <laughs> Mine too, you know. <laughs> and then the kids came up in the household and then they father was smoking weed, you know. And then the next kid came up and then I came up and started smoking weed. That's how they go. That's generational curses. It's the stuff that our forefathers did before us and it put a curse on the generations to come. Amen. And that's what's going on a lot of the times when you find yourself bound, when you find yourself going through. Some of it is connected to generational stuff that your grandma did, that your grandma grandma did. Amen. It's generational. It's generational stuff that you've been taught. You know how to make pig feet because your mama taught you. Amen. Then some people don't eat pork, but because your mama ate pork, you eat pork. Amen. So I'm just saying that to say that you only know what you've been taught. You know what you've learned. But sometimes, even when you were not directly taught a certain thing, even if the spirit was in the household, y'all understand that? Even if the spirit of it was in the household, your spirit picked it up without realizing you even picked it up. Woo, Jesus. Sometimes you pick up stuff and don't even realize you pick it up. If you go past a burning building, you might get some soot on you and you wasn't even in the fire. Right? Amen. So sometimes we get some stuff on us we didn't even ask for. Just because we was in the vicinity, just because we was in the atmosphere of it, we done collected some spirits. We done collected some stuff. Amen? I bless you, God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. Amen. And we're speaking about spirits on tonight. And spirits are real. If God is real, then that lets us know there's an enemy. The devil is real. So we have to get, got to begin to know our enemy. If we're going to win this war, if we're going to win this battle against sickness, against drugs, against poverty, against depression, against suicide, oh, bless the name of God, then we have to begin to understand how the enemy operates, amen, so that we can have some victory in our lives. There was a man named L. His name was L, E-L, L, L. He was the father of Bell, B-A-A-L, for those of you who are writing this down. And El was the father of Bel. He was the father of 70 gods. Now we just talked about it being one God. He was the father of 70 gods. He was an idol worshiper. He worshiped gods. He worshiped gods. He worshiped the moon, the stars, the sun, the, the cow, the calf, gold, jewelry, sex, money. Amen. It's somewhat like what you hear that's going on today. He was a worshiper of many gods, many idols. He had idols that were set up. And we know God said, don't have no other God before me. I'm the one and only true and living God. He was serving many gods, 70 gods, the Bible said he was worshiping. 70 gods. That's a lot of gods. How many gods do you need? That lets you know your gods ain't working. Because if you need all 70 of them, what is they doing that you need so many? Oh, I'm thankful that all I need is one God. I can just call on one prayer. I got to and, and Alpha, and yes, and Peter, and John, and 70 of them, you be there all day praying, amen? And the God of sex, I need you to get me pregnant. And then you go to the God of money, I need you to give me some money. And then you go to the God of peace, I need you to give me some peace. But I thank God that we serve a God that takes care of everything. He's the God of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the lily in the valley, the bright morning star, the God of peace. Amen. He'll take care of any and everything. He's a healing God. He's a delivering God. He's a providing God. He's God. Hallelujah. He's a God that will take you out of the darkness and pull you into his marvelous light. He's God. Hallelujah. He'll take you out of the gutter and put you in the palace. He's God. He's God. He's God. Ah, bless the name of God. He's God. One God. Hallelujah. So El was his name. He was the father of Baal. B-A-A-L. The father of 70 gods. Now, amen. We look at Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth was the mother of Baal. We don't get to Baal. Ashtoreth was the mother of Baal. Her name is 
spelled like this, A-S-H-E-R-O-T-H. If you miss it, ask me after and I'll give you the notes, A-S-H-E-R-O-T-H. Ashdrop, she was the mother of Bell, B-A-A-L. She was supposed to be the fertility goddess. She was married to the spirit of El, the man of El. He was the god that uh, was supposed to help you get pregnant. Remember the sex god, the fertility god, amen? But she was the fertility goddess. They prayed to her and women when they wanted to get pregnant. They didn't pray to God, but they could have asked God, right, and say, God, I need you to bless my womb, make my womb fertile. Wait a minute, let me make sure I don't do nothing that. <laughs> To be pregnant. She promoted sex acts. She was very sexual, very promiscuous, very just very firm and very she, she promoted prostitution. Because along with praying for that sex came some unclean stuff. You gotta be careful what you ask for sometimes, right? You just might get it. So she was praying for people to have sex and then but they was having unclean sex. They was having sex outside of marriage. They was having perverted sex. They was having sex with one another. Then it turned to sex with the same sex. Amen. Somebody called that. And it was just this type of sex and that type of sex. So it became very perverted. Amen. So it wasn't just about married couples getting pregnant anymore. It, 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 the enemy got inside of it, inside of the astral uh, worship, and began to contaminate it. Now you have all kinds of different sexual sins that was going on. Now we get to her son, Bell, right? I'm gonna take my time. Bell, B-A-A-L. Her son was the chief male pagan god. He was a Phoenician god. He was worshiped by the Canaanites. The Canaanite people worshiped Bell. Again, like father, like son, he wasn't no good. Amen, when the Canaanites, when Israel first came to Canaan, amen, they began to worship what Canaan worshiped. They, they begin to fall in line. You know how you tell your children? Well, when you're in Rome, you do as Rome is. That's why I tell my kid when she comes from college. She's like, well, I'm at college. I got to do all this cleaning. I got to do it. When you're in Rome, you do like Rome. When you come home, you do like I tell you to do. Amen. Or go back to college. You got a choice. You don't play that. It ain't no choice. Amen. And that's how it was in the land of Canaan. They served idols. They served other gods. Amen. That's what got Israel in, in trouble with God because they were serving other gods. But that's what he did. He set up gods for the people to worship. He was a god of fertility like his father and mother, like father like son, like mother like son. That's that generational stuff being passed down. He was the uh, god of fertility. He was a sex god. He promoted illegal sex. He promoted uh, and he also was the god of storms and weathers and clouds. That's why when people talk about um, Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. When they talk about uh, soothsayers, you know, uh, witchcraft, yeah. if that's what he promoted. He promoted witchcraft. Amen. People look to the moon and the stars to determine their mood, to determine their attitude. You know, horoscopes? That's where horoscopes come from. That's where it was motivated from. Bell. Bell. They went to Bell and said, what is it that my future holds? They didn't ask God what their future hold. They asked the Bell. What do, well, let me find out what my future holds. I look at the stars, and the stars say this, and I was born around this time of year, and the moon shined at exactly that time of day. Then that means I'm going to have a blessed day. But if it don't, that, that's witchcraft. Because any time that you try to control a situation outside of using the spirit of God to do it, it's considered witchcraft. Amen? People think of witchcraft as black candles and, you know, and things. And that is too, amen. But it's a spirit that comes behind that type of stuff. We talking about at the beginning of it now. We at the beginning of witchcraft before they even built the candles, amen. Because when people don't do candles, then you think, well, she can't be doing witchcraft because ain't no candles involved. But if she read her horoscope, she's taking part or he in witchcraft. That's what it is. It's a witchcraft spirit. We've been doing it so long till sometimes we don't like to hear the truth. But John 8 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you you free. Amen. God desires that we know truth so we don't keep doing the same thing. I love the horoscope. I got the paper every day just for the horoscope. That was my thing. And play numbers, you know, little man in the back of the paper. I would read his face, his hands, his feet. I would try to find me a number. Amen. And I wrote numbers in the numbers file. Everybody know I used to write numbers. Amen. So I was a number writer and he needed to go into jail for writing numbers.
numbers. Lock me up. Amen. That's another story. Amen. But I was making money, but it wasn't God. It wasn't God. It wasn't God. I'm talking about stuff I know about. I'm talking about stuff that I experienced. I'm not here to make like I got it all together. Amen. I'm telling you stuff that I'm going to tell you my business. Amen. Or what I went through and how God had to break me free from some stuff. Amen. So Bell was a fertility sex god. He was the god of the storms, the weather, the clouds. He was even a sodomy god. They were doing all kind of crazy stuff. Amen. Bell, evil prowess, was promoting certain things. One of that, and, and even when the person died, because he had children up under him, that spirit still lived on. You gotta get that? The spirit still lived. When my parents leave, amen, when it's time, y'all gonna look at me and say, she act like her mom, she look like her mom, or that's something her mom would do, amen? Because that spirit is still embedded in me from what I've learned from my mom, amen? And I'm taking the good stuff from my no offense, no. <laughs> She will be on God to glory and got her new body, right? She'll be just totally delivered and saved from everything that we need to be saved from. All of us will, amen? When it's time to go, hopefully we'll be in our perfect state. But anyhow, I'm going to have her on me, in me. So Bell, he was, uh, when he died, he left a spirit. He left a spirit of rebellion. And he was just so rebellious, didn't like authority. Don't tell me what to do and how to do it and where to do it and when to do it and why I can't do it. And let me just do what I want to do. This is just me. I'm just grown, you know. That type of spirit, that's a spirit. That's a rebel. That's it. That's a rebellion.